Hi, it's Katrina. From sharks hanging out in hot acidic water to new species hiding in unexplored craters, here are 11 amazing animals found living in volcanoes. Number 11. Sharks and Rays While you might not find sharks in a tornado, sharks living inside a volcano are very, very real. A group of scientists went on an expedition to visit one of the Southwest Pacific's most active underwater volcanoes. The waters around the volcano are too hot and acidic for human divers, even when there is not ash, lava, and steam spewing from the crater. The last thing they expected to find were large animals. But when they left their camera in the hot acidic water for about an hour, they later returned to find something quite unexpected. A variety of hammerhead sharks, silky sharks, and a six-gill stingray appeared on the camera footage hanging out inside the volcano. But how is that possible? The volcano known as Kavachi erupted more than two dozen times in the 20th century, and the latest eruption was in January 2014, with constant minor explosions happening beneath the water. As you can imagine, this is a very extreme and dangerous environment, and the sharks could die at any moment. Scientists believe that these sharks must have mutated to adapt to the harsh conditions, or perhaps they receive an early warning signal and leave the area. During that same expedition, the researchers also spotted a shark species called a sleeper shark 12 miles from the volcano. Normally found in the northern Atlantic and Pacific, or sometimes farther south near Australia and Antarctica, this type of shark had never been spotted around the Solomon Islands before. The expedition, which was funded by the National Geographic Society, was undertaken to create a map of the volcano's peak. Researchers were also looking to find out more information about the chemical plumes and the geology and biology of the volcano. Now they have left with more questions than answers regarding the sharks and rays who live here. Sharks already live in extreme conditions, but to see them not only surviving but thriving in the acidic water in and around the volcano makes you wonder what is there and how the creatures have had to adapt over millions of years to be able to withstand the steam and lava of the South Pacific volcano. Number 10. Alaskan Fur Seals The northern fur seal population has been popping up in a very unlikely location, right on top of a tiny island that forms the tip of an active undersea volcano. Fur seals have been endangered for quite some time, but by managing to survive on Bogoslav Island, their numbers have started to grow. Vents on Bogoslav Island spew mud, steam, and sulfurous gases, and the surface is covered with giant rocks that exploded out of the vent when the Bogoslav erupted in 2016. It seems like quite an inhospitable place, but northern fur seals seem to prefer these rocky beaches to give birth and mother their pups, but nobody really knows why. The center of the island hides fumaroles that eject hot gases and spurt mud while making a constant rumbling sound. Perhaps the secret is food. Around the island, there is also plenty of squid and northern smooth tongue, a type of deep water fish. Food is easier to get in this place and mothers don't have to go so far. Seals were hunted almost to extinction by hunters in Russia and North America. The fur trade from seals and otters was a huge asset and these animals played a major role in history. When Emperor Alexander II sold Alaska to the US, fur was a major economic bonus. In other areas, the northern fur seal has not recovered. But here on this volcanic island, scientists estimate that there were 36,000 pups on the island in 2019, compared to 28,000 in 2015. So, unless there is another eruption, there is hope for the seals on Bogoslav. Number 9. Giant Woolly Rat While filming a documentary for the BBC in Papua New Guinea, a group of biologists and local trackers discovered a new species, the woolly rat, a very large, fluffy rat. The filmmaking expedition was studying the rainforest around the extinct volcano named Mount Bosavi. The crater is two and a half miles wide and surrounded with walls one half a mile high. The extinct volcano didn't necessarily look like there would be much going on in the crater. Even the local tribespeople wouldn't go to the location because it was far too steep. But a few days into their trek, the team found a lost world of rainforest and new species like the giant rat that looks more like a beaver than the rat most of us picture. This one is much cuter. These animals became almost trapped within the crater and evolved with their own ecosystem. The rat measured 32 inches from nose to tail and weighed about three and a half pounds. The Bosavi woolly rat, one of the biggest rats in the world, has a silvery gray woolly fur coat. It eats leaves and roots and investigators believe they build nests underground. But it isn't unusual to find rodents roaming around New Guinea. It's famous for its diversity of rodents with more than 70 species of rats and mice found on the tropical island. 
Along with the rat, the expedition also found 60 species of frogs, one species of gecko, three species of fish, and at least 20 new species of insects and spiders. Number 8. Fanged Fish when a group of researchers set out to investigate an eddy or a whirlpool off the coast of Sydney, they discovered a number of tiny critters living in undersea volcanoes off the coast of the continent. The scaleless blackfish with its translucent fangs looks pretty slimy and ugly, but it turns out that in these warm, acidic waters near underwater volcanoes, the fish are doing pretty well. Now the fish has been identified as an adult snaggletooth dragonfish, which is not commonly found in the area. They are a deep sea fish and are rarely seen by humans, but here they were. And there were some other surprising fish near the volcanoes too. Turns out that a lot of them were larval versions of fish and lobsters farmed commercially in Australia. When they were swept out to sea, farmers thought they were lost forever, but they are actually doing well in the warm, acidic waters of the volcanoes. These areas became a type of nursery, and this discovery could change how commercial fisheries work. The discovery in the small, swirling eddies that usually move against the current makes one wonder what other mysteries of the deep might be brought to the surface in future expeditions. Number 7. Galapagos Snakes There are 21 volcanoes on the Galapagos Islands, and of these, 13 are active. This unique place has many species found nowhere else on Earth. There are a large variety of tortoises, iguanas, lizards and geckos, birds, seals and sea lions, just to name a few. Snakes, on the other hand, are harder to find and are seldom seen. Dr. Luis Ortiz Catedral from Massey University had to trek to the summit of an active volcano to find them. Snakes in the Galapagos have earned kind of a bad rap, especially if you've seen the BBC's Planet Earth 2 where they are chasing all the baby iguanas, but they deserve conservation too. Since 2015, researchers have been working to understand the diverse amount of snakes and their relationship with other species and snakes on the South American continent. Several new species were found, including subspecies. After locating, surveying, measuring, and photographing more than 400 live Galapagos snakes, the scientists found most species and subspecies are found on a single island and its adjacent inlets. One of the most active hotspots in the world for volcanoes, the Protected Nature Reserve is home to one of the most active volcanoes in the Galapagos, Sierra Negra. The scientists are hoping to preserve biodiversity worldwide, even if that means hiking after snakes inside volcanoes. Number 6. Polycate Worm Volcanoes aren't exempt from creepy crawlies. 3,900 feet down on a muddy seafloor, scientists spotted a strange glowing creature. Known as a polycate worm, the creature is actually a ferocious predator with jaws like something out of a horror movie. Spotted with a number of other creatures in one of the deep sea regions near the Kermadec Ridge, the worm has a translucent glow to it with a rainbow-colored sheen. Found in an area with undersea mountains, canyons, and hydrothermal vents, the species, along with stocked barnacles and giant mussels, is located in an area where undersea volcanoes release hot water and gases. A type of bristly worm, there are at least 10,000 species of polychaetes found in the oceans. While most share only a few characteristics, such as a tail and a segmented body, the worms look very different from one another. One of the most diverse of this species is a tube worm, known as the Pompeii worm which lives in hydrothermal vents deep on the ocean floor where the temperature can go over 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The area in which the worm was found has 50 submarine volcanoes, meaning the various undersea creatures have had to adapt to survive, but that doesn't seem like much of a problem for some critters as so many new discoveries were made during the expedition. Number 5. Loihi Shrimp at an active underwater volcano near Guam, an increase in the number of shrimp, crab, and barnacles caught the interest of scientists. Water around the volcano was harsh, with a number of chemicals that are toxic to normal marine life, but somehow, life there is thriving. The hydrothermal vents from the volcano coat the rocks with a food source for nearby creatures, which is what sent researchers out to determine if there is a direct connection between the growing volcanic activity and the increased underwater life. One shrimp, known as the Loihi shrimp, has adapted special pruning claws that help it to harvest food from the volcanic environment. With tiny claws that are like garden shears, the shrimp is able to graze the bacterial filaments underwater. As scientists continue to study the active undersea volcano, the picture into how life on Earth may have originated in underwater environments is becoming increasingly clearer. In previous studies, geologists discovered deep sea microbes near ancient vents that were 1.43 billion years old. Steam from the volcanoes condenses and disappears in the water, giving off bubbles of carbon dioxide and molten silver. Somehow these volcanic gases are extremely acidic, yet allow for deep sea creatures to survive.
Number 4. Deep Sea Coral Studying underwater volcanoes can be a dangerous and time-consuming process, but researchers have found a new way to do so – by studying corals. As they grow, the skeletons of black corals preserve a record of noble gases in seawater, which provides information on nearby volcanic activity. Researchers looked at coral near underwater vents. They dredged the seafloor and took back samples of two types of coral to analyze them for helium, neon, argon, and isotopes. If scientists are able to extract a record of gas emissions from corals, they may be able to determine when submarine eruptions will occur, giving them deeper insight into the timing, duration, and intensity of underwater volcanoes. Number 3. Invertebrates The key to surviving around underwater volcanoes? Hydrothermal bacteria. When a fissure opens up in the bottom of the ocean, three things are released into the water – hot water, minerals, and bacteria. The hot water sustains the bacteria, which is food for deep-sea species such as shrimp, crabs, and amphipods, which are a type of crustacean. Another species that thrives is the tube worm. Giant tube worms, which can grow up to three feet per year, love this type of environment and are the fastest-growing invertebrates in the world. Dozens of different worm species live in and near these vents, but other species thrive here too. The eel pout, a type of fish, also lurks around these underwater hotspots. The bacteria that feeds these species can also be found on the creatures themselves. Many of the worm species have decorative parts that look like fur or feathers that are not fur at all, but colonies of bacteria that cling to them. Even mussels, limpets, clams, and barnacles are filled with bacteria. But the hydrothermal vents these species rely upon are not permanent. Volcanoes and vents are active sometimes only for short periods of time, and when they fall silent, these animals either die or live long enough to repopulate when another crater opens up on the ocean floor. Number 2. Mount St. Helens In 1980, Mount St. Helens in the state of Washington, USA erupted and made a devastating impact on the land surrounding it. Over 200 square miles of forests, streams, and lakes became covered in gray ash, mud flow, and avalanche debris. As scientists continued to study the effect on the area, they found some promising results just three years after the eruption. Within the blast zone, 90% of the original plant species were found to already be growing back. Sadly though, a number of species were eliminated from the Mount St. Helens blast zone due to the eruption. The amount of timber brought down by the eruption would have been sufficient enough to build almost 500,000 three-bedroom houses. All the ferns, shrubs, wildflowers, and mosses in the area vanished. All living organisms in the upper North Fork Toodle River died, and 15 miles of the river disappeared completely. Countless fish, birds, hares, and deer also died, as well as mountain goats, cougars, black bears, coyotes, and elk. But as vegetation began to regrow, elk and deer re-entered the blast zone. The elk who moved through the area at will were a big part of the picture, as they carried seeds and nutrients from outside the devastated area back in. Taking a cue from the elk, beavers from adjacent forests also followed the water upstream, and salmon and trout from the Pacific Ocean somehow found a way to overcome the muddy and ash-clouded waterways to spawn in the area. Almost 40 years after the eruption of Mount St. Helens, the number of species living in the area is getting near to pre-eruption levels again. Even though researchers think it will take at least 200 years before old-growth forest again occupies the blast zone, we can be hopeful that the birds and animals that prefer that type of habitat will once again return to the area. Number 1. Megapode Birds In Papua New Guinea, there is a species of bird that actually needs the specialized environment around a volcano to breed. Known as megapodes, or incubator birds, they are similar to chickens, with a small head and large feet, and their name comes from the Greek meaning large foot. In the caldera of Mount Bosavi, the megapodias burrow into the hot ashes to bury their eggs. Unlike other birds which use their body heat to incubate their eggs, megapodes bury their eggs within the ground and use volcanic heat to help them hatch, and are the only known birds to do so. This alternative way of incubation means that their eggs are structured differently, and at least 50 to 70 percent of their weight is the yolk. At hatching, the parents never see their young, and they hatch with open eyes, full bodies with feathers, and strength to run and start eating right when they're born. Various species of megapode live across Australasia and the Pacific Islands, but since humans have arrived in the area, populations have severely declined and are in many cases highly endangered and at risk of extinction. Thanks for watching! Which animal surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe and I will see you soon! Bye!